Hi everyone, I just wanted to show you this frame that I got. Uh, I got it some time ago uh, of Bono and when it arrived it was broken but I managed to glue it together and I set it up here. I used to have it on my table but I moved it because I got my TV now so I just put my little altar here on the side that I so that I can pray and I move my statues around I put them I put the one of Our Lady of Lourdes there and I move the other one to my bedroom that I got so there's always ways to improvise and to change things up there's my statue there of Our Lady of Knock And I kept it there. So today I went to church. I've been pretty exhausted actually. We had our service today. This morning for all souls. But usually I go and I go up and I say my dad's name. But today I was sitting in front of my computer and I fell asleep. <laughs> By the time I woke up, it was already lunchtime. So, anyway, I said my prayer. I went to the Mass today. But the reading today was about taking the lowest places, taking the lowest seats, and then being invited to come up higher. And I think that the lowest seats are sometimes the best seats, because I know with me, um, if I had to choose... I wouldn't want all the pressure that all these people at the top have. I've been in those positions and it's they are exciting positions, they are nice positions, but they are there's also like in my role, because we work in standalone positions and we have to apply our policies, there's a lot of pressure. So it doesn't matter if you're getting paid a lot or you're getting paid a little. And that pressure takes a toll on you. At least for me, it takes a toll. But we learn to adapt and we learn to carry on. And over time, we are invited to become like the women and men of the Bible, to be strengthened in our faith, to be strengthened to the point where we can be like the Elvis Presleys of this world, or we can be like the Mother Marys of the Bible and cherish things and keep them in our hearts. Or we can be like the Matthew Perry's of this world and overcome challenges and help the next generation that's come behind us. And most of us are trying to do that. We're trying to be good people. We're trying to be compassionate and merciful and not let what we went through turn us into people who are turned in on ourselves and only interested in money and only interested in our lives. We are trying to create good opportunities for others. And that's why I went back to the One Campaign because for a while I was exhausted. I just felt like I can't keep doing this. I never have work. I never have anything. And also my reputation was spoilt by what Eddie Farid did to me. So I, I worked so hard to come up to get myself to a point where I was respected in this country. I was invited to events by the MPs, by people as Bono's representative, as a representative for the One Campaign. And so when he spoiled my reputation, including in the church, I was very, very hurt by what happened. And I wasn't the only one who was hurt. My family and my friends were also hurt. And the women and men I volunteer with in the One Campaign were also hurt. And of course Bono must have been hurt too. And Gail and the people, the senior leadership who chose me as one of the parliamentary writing representatives, they must have been hurt too. And I did say, I remember when I went, once I went to the, the city hall, and on John Street and they were I didn't know who they were calling to tell them that I was there it must have been the police 
that they were calling to say that I came to use their computers to apply for jobs because my computer wasn't working properly. And also I wanted to go out. I didn't want to be sitting at home by myself 24 hours a day, seven days a week with no company. So I used to go out to use their computers. And I had told that woman that was sitting there, I said to her, who are you people calling? And she just looked at me and she never said anything. I said to her, she, she said to me, well, you know, there's this, this thing going on with Credit Suisse. I said to her, you know what? If you people are taking his side, you better watch out because this is not going to end well for them. And she just looked at me. I don't know what the police were saying to her, but she was getting so upset. She kept saying, no, no. So anyway, I just had to carry on with my life. There was nothing I could do. I was already in the lowest positions. I was already on contract work. I already had no stability. And in, nobody invited me to come up higher. The way I was invited to come up higher was in the church, in the volunteering I did in those positions, but not in my workplace, not in the workplace. I was never selected for promotion, for permanent roles, for things that would get me to a place where I could earn a good salary. And when the management did try at TD, they got pushback. So it's very unfortunate, actually, because when you put in the work, you want to get the rewards. And you don't want the people who helped you and who believed in you to land up getting hurt. You don't want your mother to get hurt. You don't want your siblings to get hurt. You don't want your brother to get hurt. And it's very hurtful. It's very hurtful. There are some things that only God can heal and some things that only God, God's love can heal. And so I don't know, I really don't know if I would have come this far without Elvis Presley's music, without his faith to guide me, without that music changing all the time. I don't know. But I do know when that investigation closed that day and I was left in my apartment all by myself, I wept when my aunt and uncle left me here and I told them I want to come to my sister's place and they said, no, you stay here. In the morning, we'll come and get you. I wept and they had, I had put my YouTube on and that song came on, Cry Like Memphis. And it was on the day that we buried Elvis Presley in 1977. That was quite ironic. That was the day that they closed that. It was supposed to have been closed. I don't know what happened after that, that I, they kept going like this. But I did weep and I, and I did not, I did not ask God, why is this happening? I did not question him. I did not say anything, but I just prayed for the strength not to lose control of my life. And slowly, slowly I've taken control back of my life. I'm not earning what I would like to be earning, but I have asked the church for help. I've written to the Archdiocese for myself and my mom. I've asked them for financial assistance, maybe through Share Life or maybe through another program. They can get some financial help for me. And I've moved forward and that's all I can do. And as for those top jobs, I know a lot of people aspire for them. I have the skills, I have the education. If I do get them and I can manage them, that's one thing. But I'm, I'm not somebody who's saying that's my ultimate goal in life is to get the top job. And I feel very embarrassed when I talk to my nieces and I talk to people and they've gotten gifts from the rest of the family. And then I have to say, sorry, I couldn't give you anything or I couldn't send you anything because I have a very poor paying job. And my nieces are small, they don't know. They, to them, it's more important to be with me and see me and enjoy the time with me. But it's very embarrassing to be at my age and to have done everything that I've done and not to have money in my bank account, not to be able to 
send them something for Christmas or for their birthdays. It, for me, it's very embarrassing. And it should be embarrassing to the leaders of this country. It should be embarrassing to Credit Suisse that people were allowed to do this to me. Because I should be able to get a job and hold a job based on my credentials, my qualifications, my experience. Not that somebody does you a favor and then they expect something else in return. Or they want to be your friend. I was very clear when I worked there that I was not going to be Eddie Farid's friend. And it should have stopped there. But it didn't. They brought it into everything and I had to push back. I had to push back and take my life back. Take control of my health back. And it wasn't easy for me. It was very, very hard. And I can't imagine how those days must have been after Jesus got crucified. When Mother Mary was without her son. She was with the disciples and she had the disciples. They took her in as a mother. But it must have been very, very hard. The same way when my mother got married, it was very hard to let her go. For me, it was very, very hard. But I did it out of love for her. And so when you hurt me, or when you hurt a woman, you're not just hurting me, you're hurting Bono, you're hurting you too. You're hurting the people that chose me to be in a leadership position. And when I said God will punish them, I meant it. Because I did not ask for the bank to be closed. But when you hurt people, when you mistreat people, when you abuse people, when you spoil people's reputations, it comes back on your family. So don't do it. Don't do it. It's as simple as that. This, this World Cup went off successfully. I'm happy. I'm happy for South Africa. I hope they build on that success now. I'm happy France had a successful event. But they need to remember where their values are coming from. It's not easy to be Christian in the world today. If we go for the root of, you stole, cut off your hand, you had adultery, stone the woman. In the, in the Muslim culture, they would have stoned me because they blame the woman. They never blame the man. So when you hurt me, remember my vocation in the church. It doesn't matter whether I earn $2 or if I earn $200,000. Remember who I belong to and then think about what you're doing.